this computer. Okay, and then for um, every, I won't go through a ton of introductions just because we have a lot to cover, but I do want to just mention that we have some guests joining us. Um, we have Rebecca Armenta from the Col Denver, Colorado area, uh, Karen Lindquist, part of our team, Kelsey, part of our team, and Lois Beckman, I see. Hello, Lois. Lois, I believe, is I can't remember if you're in, I know you were working with Ryan Spill. I can't remember if you're in Philadelphia or Ohio. Pennsylvania, Ohio. But welcome everybody. And I'll go ahead and get started officially. So um, this is a meeting that we hold once a year for our uh, board of directors. So just welcome to our 2024 annual meeting of board of directors. It is being recorded and the recording will be made available um, at some point in the future on our YouTube future channel. On and the document that we'll be using for this meeting is our annual report, which will be also made, made available as a PDF and shared on our website, uh, email blast, monthly newsletter, and social media. And so in the respect of time, some slides will be briefly addressed, such as like mission, vision, history, because that information can be found on our website, while other slides will be discussed in a little bit more detail. And then we request that any questions or comments, you can put those into the chat bar um, or hold them until the end of the report. Um, but we definitely want to open it up for conversation. And then after the conclusion of this portion, um, we'll hold a, a brief official board meeting. And so thanks to everyone for coming. And we hope you are as excited uh, about the future of ESFL as we are. And so I will go ahead and start sharing my screen and turn this over to Mike to kick off the annual report. Thank you, Sean. So yes, again, welcome to the annual report. Next slide, please. So as Sean was stating, our mission is definitely always posted out there, but you know, our main goal is to empower, connect, and educate. And we do that through our in-person uh, triannually meeting. Uh, thank you. Next, please. <laughs> <laughs> table of contents, and then uh, we get onto my report, which would be the next page. And now, yeah, there's my face. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, another year has flown by. We've been really busy, a lot of, a lot of things to share and tell about this year. But first off, I would like to welcome our two new board members, Victoria Powell and Pete Nori. Uh, Victoria has more than 30 years experience as a registered nurse, multiple specialties and certificates. She has her own consulting business where she places an emphasis upon individuals with amputation and or brain injuries. We're super lucky to have um, such an esteemed entrepreneur, author, speaker, and contributor. So thank you so much, Victoria. Pete also brings 25 years experience in marketing business development and strategic planning partnership growth. Uh, he has decades working with Autobach and Oser, gives them a unique insight into the world of upper extremity amputees. And again, can't express how fortunate we are that he too has chosen to lend his talents with us. Thank you, Pete. Thanks. Okay, so you have to give me a second on this. I'm gonna- uh, Oh, that's, that's an actual video. Ah, gosh, darn it. Just 20 seconds of your time, please. Yes, I know, but oh, it's so goofy, but fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I was kind of worried that was an actual video, but yeah. So uh, that was uh, me, Sam, and Eric out in Warsaw before we went over to Ukraine. We will definitely get to that in a moment. But I want to thank uh, people like Karen Lundquist that rotated off the board and now she's our Director of Communications Partnership. It's a staff position and she's definitely instrumental in sharing what we ESFL do to the world. Uh, Samoa Matagi or Sam, the no-handed bandit, is another OG board member and he has accepted the role of our online programs manager. He'll be running our uh, monthly Zoom meetings. And then um, just recently, well, last month, basically when I wrote this, it was <laughs> after Mother's Day. That's how long it takes to work on things like this. So uh, I want to thank Sean and Christy Turner and Julie Clarich um, for their delivery of our 
new hands-free catalog, a beginner's guide for adaptive equipment and helpful gadgets for amputees, therapists, clinicians, caregivers alike. And a gestational period for that thing was way, way too long, way longer than an elephant. And the completion of it uh, was all consuming for Sean and Alyssa right before we headed over to Ukraine. And it's like, oh yeah, hence that little video there from Warsaw. We had to fly into Poland before we went over to Ukraine and it's been an exceedingly busy year. And I'm gonna save more of Ukraine for Sean to share. So next. Okay, let's see if I can get, there we go. I was like, man, I am not done yet. Uh, Man, when we came back from Ukraine, Sam and I went to Washington, D.C. as part of the Ukraine Action Summit for uh, in April of 2024 to petition our state representatives to pass the aid bill funding the war effort in Ukraine. Um, we were invited guests of a larger group called American Coalition for Ukraine. That group was about 500 delegates strong, representing 47 different states. Overall, the trip and our mission was successful with the passage of that bill. Uh, and I have to personally thank Sam for not just putting up with me in Ukraine and the bus rides and all that kind of jazz, but then turning around and sharing a room in DC. <laughs> and yeah, man, there was a lot going on. So uh, I want to thank Sam for being such a good friend. And uh, so busy, busy, busy. I need to go take another nap. I just woke up from a nap. So. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for that slide. Now we're going to talk about our board. And I want to thank all of our board. Obviously, John, Mara, Anae, Steve, Summer, Pete, Victoria, and Harold um, all have instrumental roles in our board. And uh, I learned just a little bit ago that Mara will be rotating off of the board. Um, and I just wanted to say a personal thank you to you, Mara, for all of your contributions and everything you've done for all the years that you've been involved with us. And I know it was a difficult decision and it took a lot of strength to move forward with that and we appreciate everything that you've done. So thank you, Mara. Yes. And then for our regular staff, which would be the next slide, obviously we have Sean and Alyssa and Karen and Sam and Kelsey and Cindy. So these are the powerhouses behind the scene that help things run smoothly. Um, when Sean has ideas and needs someone to help her lift that heavy load, one of these people will step in and help her. And so our organization would not be able to run and do what we do if it was just Sean and the board by itself. So I wanna thank everybody, 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 everybody for all of your contributions and everything that you do. So thank you so much. And I think at this point is where we roll it back over to you, Sean, for your di executive director's report. I believe that's correct. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah. I think that's the fastest I've ever heard you speak. You said there's a lot to get through, man. <laughs> I'm not wasting time. And, you know, that nap did me right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Yep. So I've got um, several slides to cover that hopefully it's it's interesting information and not too boring. But um, I'll just say from the get-go, it's been exciting to see what we've been able to do, the resources, the programs, the impact that we've had over the past 12 months. We've celebrated several milestones, and I'm, like Mike, very proud of everyone who has helped bring all of the work to life. Um, our mission focus of empowerment, connection, and education is the theme that underlies our actions and decisions. We also take the responsibility of being a nonprofit very seriously, ensuring that we use the resources we are gifted with in meaningful ways, increasing our capacity for serving our community as well as filling unmet needs that might exist. And so thanks to Pete Nori and our board of directors, we've um, embarked on some strategic initiatives, one of which was growing valuable services to the community, number two, nourishing our financial health, and three, focusing on operational growth and sustainability. So um, to continue on with my executive director report, it's a lot of words, but I won't read every single one of them, but going from our Ukrainian uh, outreach trip to new partnerships, uh, to a catalog publication, um, t-shirts and bowling, we continue to creatively serve um, our community. And I will say that 2024 marked um, our seventh bowling fundraiser. So we've had people attend either Ronnie or Andy's tournaments from uh, US and Canada to help raise money 
um, for scholarships and as well as try out adaptive bowling um, and then just in general socialize with others who are also living without both arms or all four limbs. Uh, we will talk about Ukraine in a bit more detail later, so I'll, I'll kind of gloss over that. But we continue bringing people together through webinars and social media. We start conversations that explore complexities of life, whether it's parenting children without arms um, or as an adult without arms, how to parent children, uh, DIY tips. And so since early 2020, we have been expanding our connections um, and programs to include things like a monthly newsletter, frequent online Zoom meetings, virtual and in-person peer connections, um, creating unique YouTube content, outreach to hospitals um, and other partners and organizations as you know, and then creating these regular opportunities of face-to-face -face interactions through our bowling events. And for those that may not know, we've held eight um, Skills for Life events, six in person in the United States, one virtual and one in Ukraine. And you, re you may remember that Skills for Life um, six in 2022 marked our 20th anniversary. And we've gone from you know 15 people living without both arms um, attending the first event in 2002 to over 75 at the last Skills for Life six. Um, and money that we've distributed has grown from 4,500 in the early years to over 29,000 at our last event. And we continue to provide um, scholarships to our bowling events, which equals to about 11,000 annually. And so. Um, these numbers that I'm uh, mentioning right now and our strategic planning is ensuring that we'll be able to continue responding to the needs of our community um, and the unique resources and connections that we're able to provide. So as we formalize and expand our programming, we are exploring the opportunity to support regional and international efforts, especially through partnerships that help establish local resources. Um, and through these programs. It's also going to allow us to pursue corporate partnerships and grants and facilitate conversations that will help us creatively address the environmental changes, um, as well as enhance quality of life for all those in our community. And so I'm really looking forward to our uh, seventh in-person Skills for Life workshop coming up in October 2025, and I'll have a save the date at the end of our presentation. But to kind of wrap up, I wanna thank everybody, um, you know, chiming in to what Mike has said. We've, have a, 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 we've had, you know, a, a, a few people come and go in our team and, um, and it, they've all kind of led, you know, and, and brought something really special and unique that's helped us get to the next level. And so this current team, we've been meeting since January and making really good progress on a lot of projects that we didn't have the manpower to address before. And then as of April, you all know that Kelsey stepped into Mary Beth's operations role in addition to managing the social media. Um, and as Mike mentioned, Sam Matagi has joined our team as of last month as our online programs manager. Um, and I want to thank everyone on the board, Samra Kozai, Anna A. Jones, Mara Hirschbach, Carol Sears, Stephen Kasel, John Dompo, Victoria Powell, and Pete Nori for all of your countless hours and efforts on a volunteer basis. Um, your service and your passion for our community is um, very much appreciated. Um, and then always huge thank you to Mike for your sounding board, your listening ear. Whenever I have a text or a, a call or something to discuss, he's always willing to listen. Um, and then finally, just wanna mention the generosity of our do donors and sponsors is unmatched. And so thanks for believing in our work um, and the people we serve. And so I've got a page on um, the next page that is just a list of our donors. So if you know any of them, you can thank them personally too, because they are making our world a better place. And this again, will be a document that will be emailed out and the recording will be made available. Um, so next in our table of contents is uh, our accomplishments over the past year. So there's a lot of bullet points. And it's interesting to me because I went back and looked at our annual report from 2020, the very first one that we held as this board. And it was about 11 slides long. And this presentation is about 30, 30 slides long. So um, there is a lot, it's fun to look back and, and see you know, what we've been able to accomplish and see what we've, especially how we've grown and, and the things that we're doing today. So um, there's a few highlights. I mean, all of these are highlights, but a, a few from each section. Um, I, 
in April of 2024, a really cool sponsor donor partner package was created that is on our website and can be sent out to potential donors or sponsors or, or corporate partners. Um, I'm excited that Joyce Tyler, who's an occupational therapist out of Ohio, who I've known forever, um, who has a passion for this community as well, has been contracted to be our event planner for Skills for Life 7. Um, for those that that are on this call that didn't may not know this information, we received our first ever grant um, in December of 2023 from Hanger. Um, it was the Hanger Empowerment Grant, and that helped us uh, be able to produce and publish the hands-free catalog. And then we were just awarded another grant um, in April from the Drala Foundation, um, where they are giving us the money to provide one scholarship and one bowling device to uh, one person for each bowling event um, uh, in September of 2024 and February of 2025. So that's exciting. And as you all know, uh, one of our highlights from our program events and outreach was the publication of the Hands-Free Catalog. And there's a little bit more detail later in uh, these slides um, uh, with data and numbers. So let's see, um, he, some pictures from Andy's uh, tournament um, in um, October of 2023. He, he raised over $32,000 for his first ever event. And he's a very competitive gentleman and he is already on a mission to beat last, last year's uh, total. But some fun images from all the, the great events that he put together for that weekend. And then Ronnie held his sixth annual bowling tournament and raised over $21,000. So uh, it's just so much fun to see the, the domino effect that bowling has had on our community and, and the opportunity for us to get together and socialize and connect. Uh, the next um, accomplishment or task I'd like to go into a little bit more detail is Skills for Life Ukraine. Uh, which happened in late March of 2024 in Ivano-Frankivsk, Ukraine. Um, we'll, there's a whole other uh, uh, YouTube um, recording of this that I'll share a, a QR code for later that goes into a, a bit more detail, but just to share briefly here, this was the first time we've ever tried something like this, where we took the Skills for Life workshop content, practical content, along with attempting six bilateral prosthetic fittings, um, and in the meantime, training OTs and prosthetists in Ukraine. So, and then most importantly, dozens of people, uh, limb loss, limb different individual, individuals being able to meet face to face um, to address the challenges that, that they face of living without arms. So Ukrainian and, and American um, limb different individuals alike. And so without, I wanna make sure that we say thanks to Protez Hub, and the other sponsors that made this program possible. Um, and then just to, to show the impact that 20 uh, ergotherapists or physiotherapists um, were their, their knowledge increase um, was affected. So they might have had some minimal skills, but we helped explain the nuances of bilateral upper limb loss rehabilitation. Uh, seven Ukrainian prosthetists were trained in the, in the proper fitting of bilateral body powered prostheses. Six patients were fitted, um, so five and a half arms. One gentleman only wanted one side fitted. Um, and we, over 50 plus people were connected through this event with the therapists, with the family members, with the prosthetists and the therapists and our team that traveled. Um, and there's our group, one of our group shots. And the YouTube video will um, that's on our, our channel, um, you can scan the QR code when you go back through our PDF document to make sure you go and watch that. Recap summary if you haven't seen it before. And then next, I will be moving on to our hands-free catalog. Um, so this resource, uh, literally Mike mentioned it was, it was started uh, seven, eight years ago. And um, it, it took a very long time to kind of get to the point where we were ready to, to put it in a format that it was going to work. So um, it's, got hundreds of products that are recommended by and for people living without both hands, arms, or more, as well as the therapists that have experience in working with these devices. And thanks again to Hanger Foundation and their empowerment grant for making this become a reality. But um, thanks to Alyssa, she's gone through um, the box link and been able to, to compile the data, knowing that it's been viewed over actually 1,500 times now, downloaded more than 300 times, and 
43 U.S. states have um, previewed or viewed the document in over 25 countries. So I think those are pretty cool stats and another QR code in order to download um, or access the catalog. So next is our financials. And I know I'm going fast, but please make sure if you have questions or comments um, to note those and, and uh, ask them at the end and then uh, or put them in the chat bar. But this was an interesting slide from our bookkeeper, Cindy Weeks. And it's a condensed statement of activity by class from January to December of 2023. So it's really nice how she's taken total revenue, total expenditures and our net revenue. Um, and I will kind of give a, a little bit of more detail or information on this. Um, so I just want to have everyone note the volume of direct program expenditures and scholarships. We are prioritizing that the investments we make in the skills, our contractors and our staff time are also prioritized in our program. So for example, a lot of my time is spent responding to in individuals and connecting them with others or resources or planning things like Skills for Life 7. Um, and then in Kelsey's case, she's the heart of our social media, sharing information and building engagement online. And so that's programmatic as well. So we've done things like create an investment account as well. It, you'll see this here in some of the other um, documents, but we have created an investment account so that our funds are earning interest instead of just sitting there. Um, and I am just so happy that we have Cindy Weeks, who's come on board since our last annual meeting, um, because it, it's it, it's just a world of difference. The things that she can put together and the data that she can crunch and the reports that she can provide us, the questions that she can answer. Um, and so I'm just, you know, pleased as punch to have um her and her professionalism as our financial expert, because it's already changed how we look at our monetary resources and ensuring that we operate as we go. So um, I do want to move on. There's two other little pieces here. I want to just show two in 2024 year to date. So January through May, if you see um, here, it's showing our revenue is tracking slightly above the year to date that's budgeted. And then our expenses are tracking slightly below the year to date. So it basically, Cindy was telling us that that looks great. That's awesome. Um, I, so a few other slides to kind of wrap things up is just to say the lifetime impact of enhancing skills for life. Um, even though we've only been around since 2017, um, over $100,000 have been raised for scholarships since 2002 and over 310,000 in sponsorships. We've had several grants awarded in 2023 and 24. We've supported at least 120 individuals living without both arms to attend Skills for Life workshops or bowling events. And as I mentioned, we planned eight Skills for Life workshops and, and currently in process of planning number seven in person. Um, and we've impacted over a thousand limb loss individuals and healthcare providers through events and programs in all 50 states and over 36 countries. So Mike, I know you will appreciate these maps because you know how obsessed I am with filling them, but we finally reached all 50 states um, milestone and um, we have reached over 36 countries. So I'm gonna wrap it up there and just say, I want everyone to save the date for Skills for Life 7, which will be held um, in the Houston, Texas area, October 16th through the 18th of 2025. So that concludes my portion, but I'd love to hear from anybody in the audience, whether it's John, hi, John Yount, it's nice to meet you virtually, and, and, or hey. Becca or anybody else that might have questions or board members. I thought that was really good, but. Yes, thanks thanks to Karen for all her help putting that together. Yeah, thanks for, for letting me listen in. I appreciate it and it was very informative. I don't have any questions though. Okay, <laughs> I hope it was interesting. I don't, I didn't, yeah. okay, good. Hey, I have Harriet. to say, uh, you made a comment about how the group has evolved and um, matured over, especially uh, the last four or five, six years. Uh, the prophet the professionalism that's reflected in that report in every aspect of it, the major 
activities, the the international trip, et cetera, is just a whole, a whole new level of professionalism in this group. And I'm sure those of us who've worked in industry, probably that's everyone at some point, uh, can appreciate how important that is and how well it sells the group going forward. In, in other words, uh, encouraging more sponsorship and more grants, et cetera. So way to go, uh, everybody, everybody else. <laughs> Thank you, Harold, for all your help with all the grants. All right, any other? questions or comments or concerns before we release everybody and hold our more official quick board meeting? I can't believe how quickly we got through that. That was only 30 minutes. I thought it would at least take an hour. Hey, Shana, the thing that I'm most proud of is that we're able to do impact today, but then also think about the strategic direction. And so, you know, Pete really driving a lot of that and, and having goals to aim towards is just wonderful. I just think it's such a big step forward. Yes. Other, otherwise, it was aimlessly floundering about. And, and as a point to that, we'll be reaching out to um, the members to get more feedback on that strategic planning as well. Excellent. Yeah, I think maybe we could have a questionnaire for uh, like next year's in person, maybe, or a small round table or a discussion, you know, an actual uh, session uh, to hear directly from those that attend. That might be good. Awesome idea. Did I just volunteer for something? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, I put, did I step in it again? <clears throat> Duly noted. Uh, <laughs> Kelsey, I can see Kelsey taking notes right now in the corner. Yeah, duly noted. So I've got like, your name written down. I've got a list going. <laughs> I'm going to go back on mute. <laughs> Smart move. Oh, man. And yeah, I'll just, I'll circle back to you. Th Mara, thank you for everything. I know I, I sent it to you kind of privately, but thanks for everything that you've contributed to the organization. And, you know, we're sad to see you go, but I know that how, um, that it, how much you want to be able to contribute and and the, the time struggle uh, that, that we all, you know, that, that you have, um, but but I don't want to keep trying to <laughs> convince you to stop. <laughs> Are you gonna stop beating her about the head and shoulders. <laughs> I know. Yep. Uh, yeah. No, and I'll still be available to help help Sean out with things and everything too. So it's I won't be gone. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> she can always tap into me. <laughs> yep. We're glad to hear Noted. that for sure. Noted. Oh, Kelsey's writing down again, isn't she? Yep. Harold said noted. Kelsey's writing it down. No, it's been a great group, and I've really, really enjoyed it and staying just connected with the community and everything. So, um, it was a tough decision to to do, but uh, I, I think in the long run it'll be it'll be the right one. So. Yeah, yeah, I I understand. I mean, um, especially when our daughter was growing up, my wife and well, I still volunteer, but so much volunteering and and it's it's difficult to to make that decision and say look that i gotta cut something out because i'm floundering with so many other different things or you know i'm just it, my heart doesn't really uh fit that anymore i mean i let go of a couple positions over the last two to three years and you know it, it was time. It was time, but it's still an extremely hard decision. So uh, when I said I admire your strength making it, I, I was being sincere and honest about it because it's hard. Thank you. Okay. Well, any other questions or comments? And I, I don't know if anyone has met John before, but he was one of our spotlights um, recently. Uh, and you're out of Florida, like the Miami area, correct, John? Miami, yes. So 
yeah, yeah. I've been, been doing this for a very long time, mostly in person, because I started out in 71. There, we didn't really have a whole lot of communications except go find people with that any arms and talk to them. And I was really fortunate to be able to do that. And um, like Mike said, I got busy with my career and doing a lot of other things with my family and my own personal life and really kind of just drifted away from working with other amputees. And when uh, I was going to the Fort Lauderdale clinic and hangar. I think it was Amy, one of the OTs there said, why don't you check out this group? And it's kind of perfect because I'm sort of like full circle. After 53 years, I'm kind of going back to where I started in some way. <laughs> John, we need to get you, if you haven't already connected with Kevin Brennan. Um, you guys are our old timers in the group. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Kevin's stuff. I really admire his uh, demonstration on falling down because that's always uh, been something that uh, I needed to learn more about, uh, not the hard way. <laughs> well, I think that was Mike, that recent video. Mike, okay, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was very nice, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I've already gotten lots of good uh stuff personally and hopefully i've been able to share some ideas that i've had over the years that would so be I, really, awesome. I appreciate that yeah looking forward to that all right well then um we will then continue on with a very brief board meeting but so we'll let uh john and Hi. rebecca and karen say good bye, -bye. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Ask Mike, that wasn't a stunt man on that uh, falling thing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a body double. No, and Harold, you would you would laugh. That video is condensed to like tw what twenty seconds. Yeah, um, but. The, I have a six minute long version because Mike is talking and, and explaining what's about to happen. And he's four or five minutes into it. And I'm just like, oh my God, Mike, that's so much buildup. Just do it. <laughs> and so <laughs> he did it and he did it so quick. And I was like, oh my God, now you're going to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, uh, well, I've fallen enough. Let's put it that way. So. Yeah. There was no uh, EMT on the present. <laughs> present. No backup. Yep. Okay. And so, hey, John. Good. Yeah, it was good. John Yount, I'm going to um, go ahead and re either remove you or ask you to, to um, leave the meeting so we can do our board meeting. But I definitely want to connect with you at some point again soon. Yeah, me too. Bye bye. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, John. All right, because I think if I remove somebody, then it might kick them out permanently. So I don't know how to do that. No, no there was a warning. To... You can you can remove them, and then it asks you like, do you want to report or block them? And you just say no. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I was like, I don't want to like remove them and not have them not ever join. You again. can never come back again. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, okay, so I will pull up the agenda. It's somewhere. Um, and then, Kelsey, did you send, uh, send out hey, the stop recording? I think. Thank you, Kelsey. Did you send out the May minutes along with the agenda uh, from last year's board meeting?